I know Dr. Dolan from the day that I was a third year med student at Georgetown in 1970, and he was the pathologist at the hospital, um, chief of staff. So when I started my clinical rotations, he was the man. He started the whole show. He was committed and driven and loved his work and knew everybody. There was something went wrong on the OBGYN service. And he called me and he said, uh, go over there and find out what it is and take care of it. And I said, I have no training in OBGYN. I said, I don't know the first thing about it. He said, you're a doctor, aren't you? Back in 1990, I had this very complex patient who needed hospitalization but had no insurance. I wanted her to forego the six hour delay in the emergency department because she was in great pain. And so I went to Dr. Dolan and asked him how I was going to get around this. And he said, if we can't take care of the sick and the needy in this place, what the hell are we doing? He's uh, an icon, in my opinion, of Virginia Hospital Center. And I think without him and these lectures, this hospital would not be as good as it is because they are practicing state-of-the-art medicine. And I don't think that could have happened without them. It was later that I learned that it was Dr. Dolan who, you know, years and years ago, had really formulated this plan to bring residents from the university hospital setting to community hospitals. Because community hospital scenes and experiences were completely different than the university setting. The dynamics of medicine are unbelievable. And we're on the verge of some very significant changes. When those changes take place, other things will appear. So you have to maintain the contact with the field and have a place where there's an opportunity for people to present new information and new data. What's happening right now? What is? What should we be learning together? What should we be talking about who is the best in the nation to come and talk to us. And the list of those speakers has been really tremendous. For example, one of the lecturers was the world expert on breast cancer. He came to us from Italy to give the lecture. And, and some people locally uh, in his field said, oh, why, well, why didn't you ask us? But we weren't the world expert. But I think one of the most important things is the following day, we'll have the lecturer give a revision of the lecture to the students and the residents from Georgetown and to other faculty members or uh, community, mem community doctors that could not make it. And that is such an important piece of the teaching part of what Dr. Dolan wanted to always enable this hospital to be. Again, its charter was to be an informative medical lecture for physicians. That's how it started off. And we've modified that to include the community as well as physicians. So that it was of, of great interest to the physician, however, would also draw in the local Arlington community. Well, I think the vision of this lecture was really to say, what would Bill do if he were here? Who would Bill Dolan invite to speak? And I think uh, the lectures that have been delivered have been wonderful. They've been inspirational. And honestly, they're Bill Dolan reaching forward. I think Dr. Dolan's vision for this lecture series was really to bring this small suburban hospital into high levels of academic engagement. This lecture series for the last 30 years has really accomplished that mission. Well, anything that lasts 30 years in today's world, particularly in regard to medicine, I think speaks for itself. I mean, medicine has evolved enormously in the last 30 years, and this is still going on. And so I would hope that the medical community and the community at large would take advantage of this and continue to attend these lectures. I think this was Dr. Dolan's legacy. This education process would continue on after he left us, and, uh, and that's the way it's worked out, that his influence is still there.